companies announce and stuff, and that's why we bring you tech news. That's why we bring tech news. That's why we bring tech news. Tech news. A tech news. Get it. We're dead. All of us. It's over. Thank God. It was a good run. There have been so many tech vulnerabilities announced in the past couple days that we might as well give up now. To start with, security researchers from multiple universities and institutes have discovered more possible attacks that take advantage of the speculative execution hardware found in basically all Intel processors made since 2011. That's the feature that was also targeted by the Spectre and Meltdown attacks first disclosed in January 2018. The new collection of attacks includes Zombie Load, RIDL, Fallout, and store to leak forwarding. But Intel has taken to collectively referring to all of them as microarchitectural data sampling or MDS. A lot catchier. <laughs> Much better. As the name implies, these vulnerabilities allow attackers to steal data directly from an Intel processor. Some companies have already started mitigating the risk with patches, including Apple. Turning off hyperthreading might help protect some systems, but according to Intel, it might not actually have much of an effect. Regardless, the newest Chrome OS build has shut off hyperthreading by default. I can't imagine many people are using hyperthreading on Chrome OS wow. systems. It's very toxic. But sure. Good job, Chrome. Unfortunately, all users of Intel CPUs can do to protect themselves right now is make sure your systems are up to date so you can get security patches as soon as they come out. Users of AMD CPUs, meanwhile, can put their feet up and watch their rivals <laughs> scramble. You know, maybe have some ice cream. Yes. Let out a few belly laughs. This is our time. <laughs> You're screwed. <laughs> but that's not all the security news we have today. No, Microsoft has identified what they're calling a wormable flaw, which could, if exploited, lead to a global malware threat as dangerous as the WannaCry epidemic that afflicted PCs worldwide, worldwide in 2017. That was bad. They're calling it Will Cry for sure. <laughs> it definitely, actually, no, it won't because They've patched things. Let me tell you about it, James, okay? The vulnerability concerns Windows remote desktop capabilities and is so severe that older versions of Windows, including Server 2003 and XP, are receiving patches to protect anyone who might be the equivalent of the old hermit living in the cave still using like a hand-cranked pencil sharpener. <laughs> that's, that's the example I could come up with like old tech. You know, we all use electric ones now. Uh, but guess what? There's more! Google is telling users to get their Titan Bluetooth security keys replaced because its existing model could be easily hijacked by nearby attackers thanks to a misconfiguration in the device's pairing protocols. And guess what else? WhatsApp identified a vulnerability that allowed attackers to successfully load spyware onto Android and iOS devices simply by voice calling them. The victims didn't even have to pick up the call. That's fixed now, so make sure your apps are updated. But like... <laughs> That's crazy. Shiza Manelli, can we stop with the hacking already? It's enough to make a guy want to switch to a Mac. They don't get viruses. Technically, none of those are viruses, I think. But... Okay, moving on to product announcements. We actually missed this reveal on Monday by a couple hours, but Lenovo showed off a prototype of what it calls the world's first foldable PC. But hey, aren't all laptops? Yeah, yeah, I know, we're all thinking it, but I don't know if laptops technically fold, because they have a hinge, so it's more like opening and closing, you know, am I, is that? Anyway, the device is more like a tablet with a single 13.3 inch 2K OLED display that folds in half like the Samsung Galaxy Fold. It will also have some sort of stand with a mechanical keyboard available when it launches, apparently whenever Lenovo decides to launch it. And that's assuming it doesn't pull a Galaxy Fold and get recalled and delayed as soon as it shows up. Why do we need these things? Do we, we don't. We don't. Why are we doing this to ourselves? The keyboard. It's a key, the yeah, just, just put a keyboard on there. I'll tell you what we do need. That's the quick bits. Brought to you by the Drop Vast Curved Gaming Monitor. This thing is a big boy ultra wide monitor with a 3440 by 1440 resolution, measuring 35 inches from one corner to the other one. Whether you're working, watching a movie, just browsing, or poning noobs online, you'll be completely immersed thanks to its 2500 to one contrast ratio, 100 hertz refresh rate with free sync support and two millisecond response time. It's available right now through drop.com, so check it out at the link below. They told me to do the quick bits one time, so I had to. I've been doing them ever since. <laughs>
Don't you ever wish that your laptop had another tiny little screen next to the keyboard so you could like see stuff on there? No. Too? No? That's so weird, because HP for sure thought that you said that you did. So they made the Omen X2S a 15 inch laptop with an extra six inch touch screen. No. Are you sure you didn't say that you wanted that? I'm sure, dude. That's really weird. Oh, and they also announced the Omen Photon, a wireless mouse that can be charged by the Omen Outpost mouse pad. That's cool. Not so much the other one. After it was leaked to high heck, the OnePlus 7 and 7 Pro are finally out. Linus really liked the 90 hertz display, pop-up selfie camera, and 669 price tag of the 7 Pro, while the OnePlus 7 is more like a beefed up, lower cost OnePlus 6T. But if you're looking for an, another Oppo-owned phone brand with a little more personality, you can also check out the Realme X, which has two color variants inspired by garlic and onions. I love, I need to get them both. <laughs> Just don't try to plan a smooch on anyone after using it, am I right? <laughs> oh, and hey, one more phone while we're at it. The Motorola One Vision has a super tall 21 by nine, 6.3 inch display with a hole punch selfie camera. It's part of the Android One program, so while it's getting three years of security updates and the latest version of Android 9 Pie, it's only launching in Brazil and parts of Europe for 299 euros. Mm. No infinity stone in the forehead either. For, Cause it's vision. Ah! AMD is returning to E3 to host their next Horizon gaming event on June 10th, during which they will unveil the next generation of AMD gaming products. Whether that means we'll see new graphics cards, or the next gen Xbox, or a bunch of existing products that AMD has overclocked and slapped new names onto, it remains to be seen. We'll just, we'll have to see. And we may not have gotten an official GameCube classic console from Nintendo, but YouTuber Mad Morda went ahead and built her own using a trimmed down motherboard from a Wii console and a GameCube shaped gummy candy case. This is madness. <laughs> Sounds delicious. It requires a number of adapters to work properly, but I don't require an adapter to connect with this little device in a really emotional way. Wow, native support. Bless your heart, Morda. Unfortunately, you can't bless this episode back to life because it's dead. Thanks for watching, everybody. Subscribe to TechLink for some more heartwarming tech news every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and we'll see you next time. If all our computers don't explode by then. <laughs>